Meet George. George is 45 years old. He lives at home with his wife, Andrea, and two children, Charlie and Jessica, aged 8 and 11. He works as an accounts manager for a construction company, which is in an industrial estate, just a short drive from his house. Like most Australians, George is overweight. He tries to make good food choices, but it's not always easy, and it's not always within his control. This is George's day. George gets up at 7am, gets ready for work and rushes out the door at 7.30 to make sure he's in the office by 8. He missed breakfast at home, so instead he grabs a large cappuccino and a blueberry muffin from the cafe at his work. George would have preferred something a bit healthier, but the cafe only has muffins or greasy bacon rolls ready to take away. And he knows to be careful about bacon because his cholesterol is high. Around morning tea time, George is ready for a break. He makes himself a coffee in the tea room and helps himself to a couple of biscuits while he's there. After all, they are free. At lunchtime, George gets something from the food truck that visits the office each day. He knows they don't sell the healthiest options, but it's easier than bringing something from home and it's part of the social culture. Trying to make a better choice and not break the family budget, George orders the meal deal. It's a salami roll with lettuce and mayo and a can of soft drink. By the time the afternoon rolls around, George is feeling a bit sluggish. He makes himself another coffee in the tea room and helps himself to another biscuit while he's there. On the way back to his desk, George walks past the vending machine and buys a packet of chips because he knows he has a busy afternoon ahead. He's taking the kids to their swimming lesson and won't have a chance to eat between now and dinner time. On the way to pick up the kids from school, George stops for petrol and sees a two-for-one deal for chocolate bars at the counter. The chips didn't fill him up, so he makes an impulse decision to eat one bar now and will give the other to the kids to share. After swimming lessons, the kids are hungry, so George takes them to the Leisure Centre Cafe with their friends. Again, he looks for good value, so he lets them share hot chips and a milkshake. They only come in a large size, but at least it will tie them over till dinner, he thinks. On their way home, George and the girls stop at the supermarket to get dinner. Andrea is making spaghetti bolognese, so George picks up a packet of spaghetti, minced meat and a bottle of pasta sauce. While there, George grabs a box of sugary muesli bars for the kids' school lunches, and he also notices a large colourful display of chocolate biscuits, which he knows Andrea will love. He picks up a packet and heads to the checkout. George and the kids arrive home and Andrea prepares dinner. While the kids watch TV, George grabs a beer from the fridge and goes outside to check on their dog. He knows he should take him for a walk, but he just doesn't have the energy tonight. At around 7.30, George and his family sit down to eat dinner. George eats everything on his plate, but he had a large portion and now he's feeling quite full. After dinner, George and his family watch their favourite TV show together. It's a singing competition that's very popular with families. The show is sponsored by a soft drink company and a fast food restaurant, which advertises its new family meal deal during every ad break. The kids pester their mum and dad to buy it for them this weekend, and George and Andrea reluctantly agree, if only to keep the peace. They share the packet of chocolate biscuits, and after 9.30, one by one, they head to bed. This day is fairly typical of many Australians. Overall, George has thought about making healthy food choices, but his options have been influenced by what was available, convenience, cost, family obligations, and of course, his personal preferences. On this day, George hasn't eaten any fruit, and he's only had one serve of vegetables. He hasn't drunk much water either, mostly coffee, soft drink and alcohol. He's also eaten a fair bit of junk food, such as muffins, biscuits, chocolate and chips. This has led to a high intake of energy, saturated fat, salt and sugar. Unfortunately, we live in a world where these energy-dense and nutrient-poor foods and drinks are available almost everywhere you go. And they're often cheaper, more attractive and ready to grab and go than healthier options. Large portions are common and excess intake is almost inevitable. But imagine how much easier it would be for George to make healthier food choices with just a few changes in his environment. 
a few changes to improve the types of foods being promoted to him, the types of foods available to him, and the types of foods that are more affordable to him. George gets up at 7.15. He's running a bit late today, so he gets dressed quickly and rushes out the door at 7.30 to make sure he's in the office by 8. He doesn't have time for breakfast at home, so he grabs a small skinny cappuccino and a toasted wholemeal cheese and tomato sandwich from the cafe at work. They provide a great range of healthy and tasty options, and George doesn't miss his morning muffin at all. George doesn't get as hungry by mid-morning, thanks to his wholesome breakfast, so at 10.30 he grabs an apple from the fruit bowl that his company provides free for all staff. The company has engaged in the government's health promotion program and is being supported to make long-term changes that promote healthy behaviours, like healthy eating and physical activity. For lunch, George gets something from the food truck. George's meal deal is a roast chicken and salad whole grain sandwich and a bottle of water. George knows he's made a good choice because the dietitian on the radio this morning was talking about how good whole grains are for you. Most of the others order the same thing because it's tasty and good value. George has a break between meetings mid-morning and makes sure he fills up his water bottle. Then he heads to the vending machine on the floor below for a snack because he knows he has a busy evening ahead with the kids' swimming lessons. The vending machine has a few chocolate bars and chip packets on the bottom rows, but it's also got a range of more nutritious options, like fruit and nut mixes, muesli bars, popcorn and yoghurt. George opts for a packet of cheese and crackers and returns to his desk. After work, George picks the kids up from school. He stops for petrol on the way and sees a $1 deal on fresh fruit at the counter, so he buys a few bananas for he and the kids. As usual, the kids are starving after their swimming lesson, so they head to the cafe. The leisure centre has adopted the government's nutrition guidelines and has labelled the cafe menu with green, amber and red dots, which signal the most to least healthy food and drinks. George scans the menu for a green or amber option for the kids and lets them share a smoothie made from low-fat milk, real strawberries and a dash of honey. It's also a nice small portion. Just enough to tide them over until dinner, he thinks. On their way home, George and the girls stop at the supermarket to get dinner. When he enters the store, he picks up a set of healthy recipe cards and begins buying the recommended ingredients for spaghetti bolognese. Lean mince, onion, garlic, carrot, zucchini, canned tomatoes, herbs and a packet of high-fibre pasta to serve with a side salad. George passes the soft drink aisle, but the prices have recently gone up due to a tax on sugary drinks. It makes him think twice about buying any, and he knows he doesn't really need it. He also picks up a box of whole grain and nut muesli bars for the kids' school lunches, and he's happy that food companies are starting to make convenient products that are nutritious as well. On his way out, George can't help but notice the large attractive display with 20% off tinned fruit, so he grabs a can and heads to the checkout. They arrive home and Andrea prepares dinner. Jessica is learning to cook at school and she helps her mum prepare the vegetables for dinner. George and Charlie pick herbs for the bolognese from their garden, then take the dog for a quick walk while dinner is being made. George and his family eat dinner together with lots of chat, which helps them eat slowly and avoid overeating. After dinner, George and his family watch their favourite TV show together. It's a singing competition that's very popular with families. New regulations against advertising junk food at times when lots of children are watching TV means there's not a soft drink or takeaway food sponsorship in sight. And George and Andrea are relieved. They all enjoy a bowl of yoghurt with tinned fruit for dessert and after 9.30 they all head to bed one by one. With just a few changes to the environment around him, it's now easier for George to act on his intentions to make healthy choices. And he's avoided many common unhealthy temptations. On this day, George has eaten around three to four serves of vegetables, some fresh fruit, whole grains, lean meat and dairy, plus plenty of water. And he's achieved all of that without having to change his daily routine. You see, what we eat is not just based on what we choose to eat. Government policies, health promotion initiatives, food manufacturing and consumer education 
are all important tools to help make healthy choices the easier choices for people like George and his family.